Hi everyone, I'm Brian from Orchids by Brian, and today we are in the beautiful Florida Everglades, Everglades National Park, and we are looking for native orchids. We're going to explore the Everglades. We're actually going to go hop in a kayak and explore the Everglades by boat, uh, going through some of the mahogany hammocks uh, and mangrove hammocks that they have in the Everglades where there are definitely orchids growing on the trees above. Uh, and we're also going to show you some of the beautiful wildlife that they have here that are not orchids. Uh, some amazing plants, bromeliads, and also animals, everything in between. So it's going to be a great video, something different. So with that, let's go explore Everglades National Park. The Everglades, often referred to as the River of Grass, is a vast, intricate, subtropical wetland ecosystem spanning approximately 2 million acres across central and southern Florida. The Florida Everglades includes areas such as Everglades National Park, Big Cypress Swamp, and the mangrove forests along the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay. This amazing area is characterized by its slow-moving shallow waters and diverse array of habitats. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be hiking and kayaking through this amazing wilderness in search of blooming native orchids. On day one of our search for native orchids, we stumbled upon an invasive orchid called Oceoclides maculata, or the monk orchid, near the Gumbo Limbo Trail in Everglades National Park. The monk orchid was introduced into Florida prior to 1974. It has spread throughout Florida and is rapidly colonizing new habitats, including more than 70 conservation areas throughout southern Florida, including the Everglades. Although the leaves and flowers of this plant are unique and pretty, they are invasive, rapid growers that can have detrimental effects on native plant life. We continued to hike throughout the Royal Palm area of Everglades National Park, where we came across several epiphytes, including air plants and bromeliads, as well as several bird species. This purple gallinule, commonly referred to as the jewel of the marsh, can be found hopping from lily pad to lily pad in the marshes of the southeastern United States. Their long toes make it possible to walk on the lily pads, one of the few birds that are actually able to do this. We also witnessed the massive Anhinga bird. Year-round, Anhingas can be found in the Everglades, inhabiting shallow freshwater lakes, ponds, and slow-moving streams with branches or logs near the water for drying and sunning themselves. Finally, we witnessed Florida's favorite apex predator, the American alligator. After many hours of observing and photographing beautiful wildlife, nightfall approached quickly. We had one more location to find a stunning terrestrial orchid called Eulophia alta, or wild cocoa. There was one more orchid that we went to find, wild cocoa, and we actually found the orchid and it is in bloom. So we're gonna show you that now. Jacob's got his light on. So let's check out the wild cocoa that we did find here in the Everglades. Wild cocoa is a terrestrial orchid found in hydric hammocks and hardwood swamps in south of Florida. It blooms from late summer through winter with peak flowering in fall, so our chances were really good for finding blooms. You can see there, whatever its pollinator is, has actually pollinated this orchid. And there's a seed pod developing. But look at that flower. That is so cool. This is wild cocoa, a native orchid found here in the Everglades. A little magenta lip. Our first native orchid bloom of the trip. Day two of our Everglades adventure and we're taking to the water near Big Cypress Swamp. A maze of mangrove waterways make up this wonderful area. And the best way to access the orchids we're looking for is by kayak. 
we're hoping to find some truly special species, including the elusive night fragrant Epidendrum nocturnum. Our journey started in the channels of calm waters surrounded by sawgrass. Alligators floated about the grass while freshwater fish swam below. Eventually, we stumbled upon a native pond apple tree. Pond apple bark makes for an amazing host for epiphytic orchids, including this Epidendrum ephistimum. Epidendrum amphistimum is one of the most common orchids in the Everglades. Growing nearby Epidendrum amphistimum was Epidendrum rigidum. We did see a few of the unassuming green flowers above us while we paddled through the mangroves. One thing I love about exploring new environments are wonderful surprises when you least expect it. Just like this suspected Encyclia tampensis. <gasps> no way. Is this? I think I just found a tempensis. And Cyclia tempensis blooms in the heat of the summer with one of the most iconic orchid flowers. These orchids can have up to 45 fragrant flowers with petals and sepals in various shades of yellow, copper, green, and bronze, and a lip that is bright white with purple spots or striping. This Encyclia received the name Tampensis to refer to the city of Tampa where Encyclia tempensis was first discovered. As we rounded the corner, surrounded by mangroves, I was greeted by an elusive creature in the Everglades not commonly seen the North American River Otter. Much like humans, these creatures are playful and curious mammals and that was definitely shown here in the behaviors of this little guy. They are absolutely fascinating creatures to watch. Now, although otters are adorable, it's important to know that otters can be aggressive, especially when they feel as though you may be intruding on their food source or near their young. After our wonderful otter experience, we started to spot the elusive Epidendrum nocturnum growing on branches deep within the mangroves. But at this point, no flowers. Just some plants in bud and others that had seed pods. And then, to my excitement, I spotted one flower in bloom. Epidendrum nocturnum is the largest flowered and most distinct epidendrum found in Florida. This orchid is capable of self-pollinating and it doesn't need an insect pollinator for reproduction, which is pretty special for this wonderful little piece of nature. The Everglades is rich with incredible plants and animals, but orchids in the Everglades are still at risk. If you visit the Everglades, enjoy these plants and leave them where they are to grow strong for other orchid lovers to appreciate in the future. Keep the Everglades beautiful, green, and wild. All right, everybody, that's going to conclude my tour looking for native orchids here in the beautiful Everglades. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm excited to bring more content in the future and showing all the native orchids that the United States has to offer. So with that, I'm Brian from Orchids by Brian, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.